Hey friends, Chris Maholka here. I'm going to continue today with some more of my foam creations, but we're going to do a little shift. Instead of bass, we're going to do a panfish popper. These little guys are really effective, float well, have a lot of movement on the surface, and panfish love them. Um, of course, if you're doing panfish, you know that several different colors are usually required depending on the mood the fish are in. I do these in black and yellow, red and white, black and white, and uh, a little frog color. And that's what we're going to tie for you today is the little frog color. So let's get going on this. To tie these, we're going to use a uh, Dairiki number 730 size 10. Now this is a nice hook for this because it's a streamer hook, but it's a light wire got a wide gap on it so it allows you to put your the head on still have space and have hook bite on the back but it's not so heavy that it's going to sink the foam head so again that's a dairiki number 730 size 10 you can also use a mustad 9672 size 10. we're going to do our little frog color popper this is a three color design I, I use that we sell at Northwest Fishing Stuff. This is the frog pattern, frog color. You can find this on eBay under fly tie stuff. And there'll be a link down below on this side by the show more section in the video that has the link for that. For the tail I'm going to use some uh, Chickaboo. I like this because <laughs> it's grizzly and uh, dyed a great color. You can use Marabou um, we're going to use yellow hen, and you can actually even use the marabou off the back of these feathers down here. This marabou for the tail, if you'd like. Tail materials aren't necessarily you know, written in stone. Uh, it can be small hackles, uh, strung hackles. Um, I use hen because it's cheap and effective, and I like it. Um, I'll use yellow and a Christmas green in addition to our tail. We're going to use our yellow uh, size 8 aught um, unithread and some lacquer to cement things down and then I'm going to use uh, at the end some tight bond thick adhesive to cement the head to the fly or you can use uh, epoxies. UV cement does not work. It has to be a thick cement that sets on its own because the the head of the fly is solid, the UV won't penetrate and set it. So uh, UV cement will not work to attach the heads on these. First thing I'm going to do is show you how to prepare this head. Um, I don't cut my heads to slide them over the hook shank. I like to punch a hole through them, melt the hole in them, and slide them over the eye. That way you don't have any ugly cuts you have to fill or anything. It makes a much better looking fly. So what we're going to do is take our bodkin, just plain old, old <laughs> brass bodkin. Um, got some bends in it and everything. And I'm going to start, I'm going to go through from the head that I want, or the uh, front of the head. I like to put the two greens in the front with the yellow toward the back of the fly. So I'm going to take this bodkin and I'm going to find the center of the head. About like that. I'm going to hold it horizontal so I can see everything and I'm going to twist the bodkin and I'm going to just run it through until it comes out the back and hopefully if you did it fairly horizontal it will be come out the back, the center of the back. Slide it up the bodkin a ways. Now I'm going to heat the bodkin with my uh, lighter. Get the bodkin warm. You don't want to get it red hot because you'll melt a big hole. Just a little hole through the center and that melts the hole through so it's in the proper place it's dead center and when you slide it over the hook it doesn't the hook eye doesn't want to tunnel off in other directions it'll go right down that hole and come out the front where you planned it I'm going to start with our yellow thread I'm just going to run it back as far as the straight shank of the hook I don't want to go down the bend of the hook I'm going to stop right at the back of the straight shank. Now I talked about the tail material in this, that so I'm going to use this uh, chickaboo here, but not something you have to have. If you have hand like this, 
and you're going to use that for your body or you have strung saddle you can always take the marabou section out pull it out flat grab it get it even and grab it with the fingertips and pull it down and pull it off that will suffice to make a nice tail right there and that's what I've used on like my yellow one here that tail is just some marabou off the bottom of your hen hackle but in this case I'm going to try out the new stuff I got the chickaboo so I'm just going to take this and run my fingers down it get all the tips together out there and we don't need a lot of it just a little bit to be on the tail like that I'm going to cut the excess lay it on there a couple wraps around cinch it down and then never go farther back this way you always want it to be just as far back as your first wrap was there. If you try wrapping back on it, your chances are you're going to pull it down over the side of the hook. So, simple enough. Tail tied in. I like the look of that chickaboo with the grizzly there. Next, because the way the fly goes of yellow and then green, I'm going to put my yellow on next. Let's find the yellow saddle. Lip. There's the one that we tore our marabou off of. I'm going to strip this back some. Strip the base off of it. Then go out to the tip and grab just the tip where the brittle stuff is and flare that back a little bit. Then I'm going to cut that little tip section off. I'm going to leave a little kind of a little nub area there that I can tie in. And I'm going to tie this in. There's the concave side of the feather the convex side. This is the side that the stem is more prevalent on. You want to go with the outside of the feather, wrap over that little nub we just did there, secure it, wrap forward a little bit, I'm going to take hackle pliers, and I'm going to grab the stem of that. wants to get away there okay and we're just flare it out and start and go around and every time we go around if this does never happen to you, you don't tie much anyway <laughs> we're gonna go around and as we wrap we're gonna pull each section pull the hackles back and you try to keep this squared up with your hackles bending toward the rear so when they lay down they they automatically go toward the back you can see it forming there the way the hackles go and we'll just stop there we got that whole hackle wrapped on it might have been a little bit too much yellow but that's okay nothing in fly tying is exact even though people will try to tell you so okay there's our yellow. Now we're going to go right back to where the, we ended the yellow. So we only gaps between the yellow and the next color. Then we do our Christmas green. Same way, I'm going to strip off the back. Whoop, let's try again there. Broke that one. This going to pull off any little Christmas green one here. Strip off all the excess, really big fuzzy stuff so we get some good length hackles there but not the fuzzy stuff that's going to sink sink our fly by soaking up water. I'm going to grab the tip of the feather and again we're going to stroke everything back. Do this an even spot there and snip it off. And leaves us that little stem to tie in. If your fly thread or if your tying thread wants to go this way when you try to wrap stuff in, spin it counterclockwise. It turns the thread so when you go up over the material, it will slant back toward the material and catch it. It won't go out over the hook. Counterclockwise twist. Now, before we tie this in, we need to do a little bit of measuring. We don't want to go way up under the head. So we look at the head, compare it there, and the head goes back to a point right about here I've got it sighted I'm going to just wrap my thread to that point now 
that leaves just enough room for the head with a little bit of the feathers going underneath it. So I'm going to wrap to that point and leave that sit there. And that gives me a marker on how far up I want to wrap the green. I want it to go up to the head but not far underneath it. Again, we're keeping the hackle toward the back. Don't want any gaps there, but we don't want to go too far forward and get up to where the head's going to fit. So if you have hackle left and you get up that far, you can tie it off. Let's just do it right about like that and tie it off. Because we went up to the point wrapping the hackle forward to where our thread marker was on the head length there. Okay. So that's tied off securely. Our, we don't have any gaps. We're looking good there on our hackle and our tail. So now we're just going to cover the bare shank of the hook with a couple layers of thread. And tie off our thread. All we need to do is a couple of half inches here. This is going to get cemented over. Threads can be secured other than knots, so not a, anything fancy there. And cut our thread. Now we know that our head's going to fit because we did the pre measure on it there with the where we tied to. The head's going to fit just about like that. So all we need to do is apply. A little bit of our thick cement. Again, I'm using the tight bond thick and just a little bit on there. I do a lot of woodworking, so there's this. I buy the big bottle for woodworking too. You can get a lot smaller bottles of this for just fly tying, a little like one or two ounce bottles. Now I'm going to take the back end, which has the yellow the way I wanted it, and we're just going to start and twist. And that's going to run that eye of that hook right up that hole that we burnt through with the bodkin until the eye comes out the front, like that. Now, when you look at it, we want the eye to be balanced from side to side. So, you, before the glue sets, you can turn it rotate a little bit until you get a really nice side to side balance on the on the head. Top and bottom doesn't really matter the hook point and different the weight on the body and the shank uh, will kind of bounce that but side to side you can get some twisting if you don't have the balance side to side. So we've turned the head until the hook is really well centered side to side and I can't tell how well that looks on camera but that then is the finished fly. Well, I hope you like how that was done. Um, if you want to make your own heads, I do have a video called Making Foam Popper Heads on my YouTube channel. Or you can buy them from us pre-made in a variety of colors like this from our Northwest Fishing Stuff site on eBay. So uh, give them a try. You'll definitely want to carry them because the panfish go nuts over them. Thanks for watching and have a good day.